Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look inside of the infamous GM Ecotec four-cylinder engine and how it works. And we'll also take a look at what causes these engines to fail just so often. Now this one here is a naturally aspirated version out of a Chevy Cobalt. Now this engine family is still used today in turbocharged form in a lot of the newer GM products. Now we'll start by taking a look at the top of the engine here. We've got a metal valve cover. You can clearly see this is a dual overhead cam design with the intake here on this side which faces the front of the vehicle and the exhaust on the back side here. And we've also got our oil fill port at the top here and the oil filter down on the block. Now this here is the fuel rail. Now because this is an earlier model it only has port injection. Now coming around to the back side of the engine here, we've got our exhaust ports at the back here and our water pump would sit inside of this cavity driven off of the timing chain. Now looking at the cross section we've got the head at the top here, the engine block and then there's also an upper oil pan, the lower oil pan is missing. Now this engine is driven by a timing chain to the dual overhead cams. And we've also got that auxiliary chain that goes to this water pump access port here. Now the top of the valve cover we have a coil unplug design because this is updated from the original design. I'm going to start the tear down by removing all the bolts going around the valve cover. And I'll just lift off that valve cover. Now there's nothing really special under this valve cover. It's pretty standard, although it's got a lot of carbon buildup. You can see as I scrape it off here with my brother's old toothbrush. Now taking a look under this valve cover, you can clearly see the intake and exhaust camshafts, as well as the timing chains. Now further taking a look inside of there, you can see you've got the cam profile here, and then a roller rocker that will actuate the valve down inside of there. It doesn't directly act on the valve. Man, look at that. I think I found me a socket. What is it, 17 millimeter? Well, it's something. Too bad it's not a 10 mil. Now, these spark plugs got a lot of carbon buildup on them, and one of them is even wet. So that tells me that this engine's been burning a lot of oil. They also use Champion spark plugs, which are pretty low end. Given that this is a cobalt, cheap maintenance is what's to be expected. I'll just remove the fuel rail here. Well, that was already loose. Next up, I'm going to remove all the 10 millimeter bolts holding this timing cover on. Let's pry off this cover here. Now taking a look at the timing setup on this Ecotec engine, we can see that we've got the crankshaft over here, and it's got two chains on it, one of which is going to go up to power the cams at the top there. And this chain is actually super loose, so I wonder if that's what caused the failure in this engine. Now the second chain runs behind here to power the water pump, and you can see it's got its own tensioner and plastic guides over here. Although it's kind of complicated because it actually runs back over this side of the engine, then across over to through these two idler gears here, and then to the water pump. Now the head itself doesn't have a timing cover, so I can't just pop this off to see what the tensioner looks like. So we're actually going to remove the cam gears, and then we're going to take off the head to see what it looks like. We'll just remove that guide at the top there, remove these two 18 millimeter cam bolts. Now I'm going to start removing all the 10 millimeter bolts. And hold the timing set together. I'm going to remove that. Whoa, that was under tension. Alrighty. So apparently the correct way to relieve tension is to remove this big bolt to get access to the chain tensioner. Alright, now I can remove the chain. So now I can remove these guides. I'm just going to push this one out the top. Like that. So this is just like that BMW I took apart. In order to remove this chain tensioner, it's actually held in behind this hidden bolt here. Which is a 10 millimeter hex. Hopefully. Yes! Now removing this reveals another 10 mil bolt. There's the bolt. And then I can remove this chain guide here. So here's the tensioner for the secondary chain. You can see it's got oil passages inside because it's hydraulically actuated. And remove the chain guides here, here. There's so many plastic chain guides in this engine. Okay, now I probably have enough tension to remove the water pump pulley and the secondary timing chain. And then finally I can drop out the main chain here and the secondary chain. You'll notice that the main chain is actually much thicker than the secondary chain. Now these two here are more than just idlers, they're actually the balance shafts that are integrated into the engine block. That's right, this engine has balance shafts in the block, not down in the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these fasteners. Now I'm going to remove all the head bolts here so we can get the head off. These are 15 millimeter bolts. I'll just zip off these head bolts. Now just like the BMW, this one's got a couple of e-torx bolts too. Alright, now I'm going to lift off the engine head here. I'm taking a look at this head gasket here. I don't see any failure points directly. Now you can see here on cylinder number one, there's evidence of some valve to piston collision here, which is what probably caused the connecting rod to pull through the block. Now over here on the block, we have the oil filter, which is a cartridge style oil filter. Let's see if I take it out here. This is what the oil filter looks like. You would replace this piece here, and of course the O-ring. Now I'm going to turn the engine over. 
so we can access the bottom. At the bottom of this engine here we have this upper oil pan which gives it this ladder like reinforcement for the main bearing. We've got a couple of 15 millimeter bolts here that I'm going to loosen off so we can have a closer look at what's going on on the bottom end of this engine. And we'll just lift off that bottom end. You can see here there's a chunk of that bottom end that's missing as a result of the catastrophic damage. I've never used my 11 millimeter socket before until now. All right, so I'll remove this connecting rod bearing and this connecting rod bearing and this connecting rod cap here. I'm going to just push these pistons down. Try to get this thing unlocked here. I'll take out the busted piston. Holy, that came with pieces. And there's a look at the broken piston. You can see the damage as well as the broken connecting rod. Now I should be able to lift the crank out of here. There we go. Just going to remove the rest of the piston here. Now looking at the rest of the rod bearings here, this one's pretty goopy but there's no major damage and this one, this one's got some scratches on it. And these pistons are pretty well coated in carbon all over but there's no major damage on the skirts of the piston indicating piston slap. And looking here at the main bearings, you can see they're pretty chunky. Everything here looks fine, there's no major scoring or damage on any of these surfaces here. And this Ecotech engine has two balance shafts that run along the inside of the block here. We'll just put this inside here so we can whip off the bolt. Then I can remove this sprocket from that balance shaft. And here I can pull out that balance shaft. You can see it's got these two main bearing surfaces here and over here. And it's got the weight in the middle here. Now we're pretty much down to the bare block. So just remove that from the engine stand. So here I've got all the components laid out on this engine here so we can take a closer look at what caused these engines to fail. Now I'm going to start here at the upper oil pan because the lower oil pan was missing and you can see there's a big chunk in this area here that's completely missing from that connecting rod that went flying through. Now if you look at the oil lubrication system you'll see that we've got the oil pickup tube which is going to bring engine oil from the oil pan which will be sitting here down inside of this upper oil pan. It is then going to flow up through here into the oil pump which sits here and then back into the upper oil pan here. Now here you can see the oil pump it's actually part of the timing cover and is driven directly off the crankshaft. You can see we've got the input and the output over here that'll generate oil flow. And this giant piece here is the oil return control which has a spring that'll prevent excess oil flow from traveling through the engine when you're revved up. Now that oil is then going to travel through the upper oil pan through this channel over here to the front of the engine. Now one thing I don't like is that the main oil galley in here is split between the block and the upper oil pan. That could potentially open you up to leaks. Now over here on the engine block if we follow that channel you'll see that it leads up to here and then goes down into the oil filter housing where the oil is going to get filtered out. The oil filter is then going to send clean oil to the block's main two galleys indicated by these two bolts here. Now looking down inside of the block the two main oil galleys run around the cylinders here and you got your main bearings here that are going to tap into that to lubricate the crankshaft. Now these oil galleys are also going to lubricate the two balance shafts that ride inside of these pockets here. Looking at the front of the engine here you can see there's a number of boss here that are machined out where your timing components are going to sit and the two balance shafts. This here is the end of the two oil galleys that run through the length of the block. We've also got this oil hole here that taps into that oil galley in order to provide oil flow to the timing tensioner for the water pump chain. So here's the chain tensioner. You can see there's a small little hole over here that's going to pump hydraulic oil in order to keep this plunger nice and taut against the timing chain to keep tension. Now one of the sore points on some of the newer Ecotec engines are these plastic chain guides. They could either wear out or if the chain tension isn't kept properly they're just going to start breaking down and then you lose timing on the engine and then these could literally break in pieces. Now this little piece here is an oil sprayer. It's going to take oil from the main galley in the engine there and lubricate the timing chain as it passes by to keep it nice and cool. Of course if this does clog up because it's such a small hole it could cause your chain to overheat and eventually snap and fail. Now I find it pretty cool that they've actually integrated these balance shafts into the body of the block itself so it doesn't really take up much footprint compared to other four cylinders that'll put it on the bottom inside of the oil pan which makes the engine a lot taller. Now taking a look at the oil filter, the housing here uses a cartridge style oil filter. Now I don't see any evidence of particles from bearing buildup so I don't think the failure here was caused completely by a lack of oil over a long period of time to wear out the bearings. Here we can also see the oil pressure sensor. Now taking a look at the top of the block here you'll see that it is an open deck design although the jacket that goes around here is actually fairly thin to allow coolant to circulate around these pistons. We'll also notice that we've got the 
oil feed here that'll go to lubricate the head component and the other one that goes to the head here to feed the chain tension. Now one thing I find really interesting about the block is the texture here. It looks just like styrofoam and that's because they use the lost foam casting method where they've actually casted a negative of a foam mold and then when you pour the molten aluminum inside the foam is lost and then you're left with this engine block. Now the crankshaft is just a typical forged steel crankshaft with five main bearings and the four connecting rod bearings. You can see where the first connecting rod bearing would sit it's really really dark and worn out so I think this probably ran really low on oil and overheated before causing catastrophic failure. At the front here you've got your timing chain gears and then at the back here you've got your crank position sensor wheel. Next we're going to take a look at these pistons or at least what's left of these pistons. Now one thing I really noticed is just how dark and black they are from how much carbon is built up. I'm pretty sure this engine has been burning a lot of oil and you can definitely very verify that by the oil control ring which is this bottom ring here with the corrugated piece in between it's all clogged up with carbon deposit now normally that should be nice and clean to allow any oil from the combustion side to escape through here and then drain back down the piston head so that you don't burn oil and that's where we come to one of the major failure points to the 2.4 liter versions of this ecotech engine and the newer 2.4 engines gm tried to make an improvement to this oil control ring in order to improve economy however this ring is too small and too thin and as this piston is moving down it can no longer take away any oil that's lubricating the piston walls and it just slips by those rings and ends up on the combustion side where it burns oil. Furthermore, those 2.4 liter versions have extra oil squirters that are meant to cool the piston heads, which are gonna put even more pressure on these oil control rings to take off all that oil and bring it back down through the piston heads. But that oil control ring is basically overstressed and can't do its job, so it just ends up back through the compression rings and then on the top of the piston to get burned. As a result, these engines end up burning a lot of oil and it's oblivious to owners because the oil pressure system doesn't really do its job in time to warn you that you're low of oil. Next, we'll take a look at the engine head here. You can see this has four valves per cylinder for a total of 16. And we've also got the water jacket that goes around it here to keep things nice and cool. Now over here, we've got the oil feed, which is gonna lubricate components inside the top of the head. And over here, we've got the oil feed that directly feeds the chain tensioner. Now this chain tensioner is actually the subject of a lot of controversy with the older Ecotec engines. Now this here is fed by hydraulics and if this hole here gets clogged up and you don't have enough pressure being fed to your chain tensioner and then your timing chain will no longer remain in tension. Now that could be what happened here. If the engine was burning too much oil then you can no longer get enough oil pressure up at the top of the chain tensioner here to maintain its tension against the tensioner and then your timing chain becomes loose and it skips timing. Now when the timing chain has skipped or the tension is too loose then your crankshaft which is connected to the connecting rods here and your camshaft which is what drives these valves here are no longer related to each other. And then once that happens the pistons are going to collide with the valves at very high speed and that's exactly what happened here. Here's a closer look at what happened to the top of this piston here as the valves came in contact with it over here and left an imprint over on this side here. Here you can still see some of the imprint on the head here where the valves contacted the pistons on this side as well as on the inside of the head here. Now an impact of the valves and pistons suddenly colliding is going to send this piston back down through the block. Now the piston isn't going to go anywhere and neither is the Brucey crankshaft so the connecting rod is your weakest link. And that's what's going to send the rest of your connecting rods right through the side of the block here and over on this side here creating these nice little inspection windows. Now these inspection ports come in quite handy because as you're trying to explain to the tow truck driver on the side of the road what happened you're going to easily see oil dripping out through here or bits of your connecting rod coming out through here for an easy diagnostic. And as you can see the result is catastrophic you probably won't be able to reuse the head depending on the amount of damage and you definitely won't be able to reuse the block unless if you use some duct tape or something. Never mind the duct tape, that's actually the main oil galley so it's just going to pour oil out. Could have got away with duct tape on this side though. Next we'll take a look at the valve train on the top of the head here. Now there is a lot of oil here so I'm just going to wipe this up courtesy of my brother's old work pants. I'm going to pop off this camshaft so we can have a closer look. At least the cam caps don't look too bad with any damage. Well never mind, I spoke too soon. This one's got quite a bit of scoring, especially compared to the other ones here. You can see on this one here, there's a bit of scoring on this one here, as well as on this one here. Now of course how this works is you've got your timing gear that's going to sit here, and that's going to rotate this camshaft, which is what's going to adjust the timing of your valves. These cam lobes here are going to push down on this roller rocker arm here, which is what's going to push down on these valve springs, and push the valves open. Now taking a close look here, you can see there's two main oil galleys that run along the length of the head here, and that's where the camshafts are going to be lubricated through these little holes here. Now feeding off of those main oil galleys 
are your rocker arms. You can see I can pull out the little lifter there. And this is going to take oil directly from the oil galley over there to take up any slack in this roller rocker arm system here so that you don't need to do a valve adjustment. So this basically functions like a little piston sitting inside of there. The oil is going to pressurize it and push it down which is what's going to push it against the valve here. So you can really see how this engine makes a lot of use of oil pressure and if you don't change your oil on time or you don't maintain correct oil quality or oil quantity bad things can happen. Now taking a look at the intake side here you can see we've got these oval shaped intake ports. On the outside here it's really crusty with carbon deposits but on the inside there you can see it's nice and clean with gasoline that gets injected right over here and that's the advantage of port injection. It keeps your valves nice and clean. We've also got the upper radiator hose coolant outlet here. Now the exhaust side things are pretty simple we've got more of a square shaped exhaust outlet here. Now of course newer model Ecotec engines put these fuel injectors right inside the combustion chamber here for direct injection. Now the advantage of that is better fuel economy as well as more power. However you are going to get a lot of carbon buildup on these valves because the gasoline isn't there to wash them off. Next we'll take a look at the valve cover which is also the subject of an issue with newer versions of the Ecotec engine. You can see here we've got the PCV system which is this measly little baffle design that's underneath these rivets here. It's meant to suck oily air from underneath the valve cover and vent it out to the air intake. However, it does have a problem with these baffles inside of here. They don't really drain that much oil back into these ports and down into the head like they're supposed to. And then you end up sucking oil into the air intake system, exaggerating the oil burning problem that this engine already has. Now don't get me wrong, the Ecotec engines are supposedly a very reliable engine in most applications. This one's supposed to be one of them with not having any variable valve timing or direct injection or turbocharging like the newer ones. However, as you can see, if your engine already has an oil burning problem, they're only going to be more sensitive to low oil pressure so you better make sure you check on your oil especially if you've got one of these engines. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one.